In this course, Tristan Wilcox will teach you how to produce music with FL Studio. Tristan is a professional music producer with over 10,000 hours experience in music production. FL Studio is a complete software music production environment. It features a graphical user interface with a pattern-based music sequencer. When you start music production, you'll find that one of the most difficult things to do on your own is create your first full-length track. And that's why I wanted the goal of this beginner course to be that you'll have something done. You'll have something finished that you can be proud of and that will apply all the knowledge that we're going to learn in this course. The way that this course is going to work is that it's going to be divided into 10 chapters. Each one of these chapters is going to be focused on one specific area of music production that you're going to be using every single time you open up a project file. In the description, you'll find that there is a link to FL Studio. You can download the free version and follow along. I'm personally going to be using the paid producer edition, but it's not necessary and you'll be able to follow along just fine. Now, without further ado, let's go to chapter one. All right, now that you've downloaded FL Studio, the first thing that we're going to want to do is go up to file in the top left corner, click new from template, and then click empty. And what this is going to do is it's going to prompt us uh, to ask us to save changes for the file. And we're just going to click no. And then from here, um, we have a completely blank file. And so now we're all going to be working from the same spot. And if something was open or accidentally opened in your project, it'll all be cleared. So we're all working from the same spot. I think that's important. So the first thing that we're going to do is just try to get a virtual instrument into our song. So to get a virtual instrument, what we're going to do is click this box up here called our channel rack. And the channel rack is a uh, basically just like a box that's going to hold all of our instruments for the song. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open up a brand new instrument in our channel rack. So by clicking this plus icon, it's going to show us uh, tons of different options for different instruments that we can choose from. And I'm going to click on flex. And I suggest that you use Flex just to follow along. And then after you can mess around with uh, different plugins as we move throughout the course. So by clicking on Flex down here, it's going to load up our first virtual instrument. Now, once it loads, you're going to see that the channel rack is sort of blocking um, our plugin. So why don't we just click X on the channel rack and then use this top bar to kind of move this plugin into view. And right here we have our virtual instrument. So this isn't, uh, some virtual instruments can be um, a singular instrument. So like there is a virtual instrument called FL keys. That is just a piano. Um, and then there's some uh, virtual instruments like flex and flex is going to give you access to all kinds of different virtual instruments. It's more of like a, a library of sorts that contains more instruments inside of it. And so that's why I want to click on this one because I wanted to show you guys all the different sounds that you get right out of the gate with FL studio, even in the free version. So I went ahead and I downloaded all of the free um, packs that you can get. And so if you want to do that now, you can download those. And you can see right here, I, I these are the ones that they currently have available. And so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to pianos where it says essential pianos. And then it's going, so you see it has packs here and it has presets here. So think of this like the category. So you have pianos, guitars, bass guitars, you can just click through these, you see. And then on presets, it's going to give me different kinds of pianos to choose from. So I have pianos and then the presets under pianos, I have close grand, and this is going to sound a certain way. And by clicking this, it opens up that particular preset. So to play this virtual instrument, what we're going to do is we're going to click on any of the keys Z through M, I believe um, you can play key, you can play different notes using your own keyboard. So you can just play keys like that, which is great. And I'm just using my, my keyboard down here. And if it's not working for you, make sure that you have this uh, keyboard piano enabled by making sure that that icon right there is orange. So now that we have that turned on, I'm going to go through just different presets and I'm just going to uh, show you guys around and just show you the different types of instruments that you can play and use for our songs. So right here we have essential guitars and I can click on like ace nylon light. And so we have a guitar here. So it's cool. And then we could go in their string section. There's plenty of strings to use as well. You got the bass, bass, you got wind instruments. You got trumpets, bass sections, brass. I mean, so you got plenty of really high quality samples and things that we're going to be using as we go along. So the next chapter, we're going to be focusing on how we can record melodies and chords and bass lines in using our virtual instruments to start beginning our track. All right, now we're ready to start making some patterns. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna navigate to the piano section and just choose any preset that you like here. I'm personally gonna go with the close grant. And from here, we can just close out the flex plugin by clicking on the X icon here. And we will be staring at a empty project again. 
Now, from here to start making our pattern, we're just going to click on the square left of the channel rack. It is called the piano roll. So once you click that, it's going to open up a new window for us. Now, this window is where you're going to be placing all your chords, melodies, bass lines, all kinds of things like that. Um, and before we get started, I'm just going to show you the basic navigation of the piano roll, and we're going to edit some settings to make it a little easier to use. So in the top left corner, you're going to find that there's this little drop down menu. And if you click that, um, we can head down to edit and just make sure you have allow resizing from left enabled. Um, it's turned off by default, and I'm not sure why, because it's extremely helpful to use. Um, so you're going to want to enable that. Um, the second thing that we have to enable is go to view, scale highlighting, and make sure that this is set to automatic. This is also going to be really helpful for when we're making chords and melodies. So we're making sure that we're placing things on key. Um, so from here, uh, the basic navigation is fairly straightforward. You have a sliding bar at the top, which lets you move uh, left and right. And then you have a sliding bar to your right, which lets you move up and down. Um, the way to kind of think about the piano roll is that it's essentially a piano that's flipped vertically. So you can see that if I uh, scroll up and down, it's scrolling up and down the pitch of the piano. So we have these are going to be higher notes, the higher I go. And then the lower I go is going to be lower notes. And so that's essentially how it works. And then if I click play right here, um, I'm going to switch it from song to pattern. Since we're listening to our pattern, we're going to want it to sit to this orange right here. And then if I hit the space bar or click the play button, you'll see that it's going to start going through. And so this right here, this little bar is going to play whatever notes we have. Um, and it's going to play them in, in a sequence from left to right. So if I just play, uh, left click a green note in here, I'm just going to click once and it's going to place a note. And I'm going to do this a couple times just to show you guys how it works. So if I click play again, you can see that it plays it uh, one after the other. So the piano roll is pretty intuitive. Um, there's, I don't feel like there needs to be a ton of over explaining here, but before we uh, start making melodies, I do think that a couple more things are gonna be important to lay out, and that is resizing the piano roll. So this can be really difficult. I remember when I first started, my piano roll was zoomed in extremely close like this, and I had to move notes like this, and it was just really, really painful, and nobody, and I couldn't find anything on how to make this fixed. So the way that you do it is this. If you scroll on this bar right here, uh, the, the specifically the bar that has the numbers on it, if you use your scroll wheel on this, it's going to resize it horizontally. And then uh, up in this top right corner, you have another bar that lets you resize the piano roll vertically. And this is just really helpful. I know that like sometimes the piano roll can be sized weird and it can be really frustrating to try to make melodies if you're too close or too far away from the notes. So I'm just putting that out there just in case one of you was a little bit too zoomed in or, or so. I think now we're pretty much ready to go over the basics of note manipulation. So I have these notes that I just left clicked in here and there's a couple things that we can do with them. So the first thing we can do is resize them. So if I hover to the end of a note, you can make it longer or shorter. And then I can do that from the left side. And then if you remember, this is the setting that we just changed. The allow resizing from left allows you to resize the notes from the left end. Um, and another thing that we can do with the notes is just move them around by hovering in the center of the note. And then finally, the last thing that we can do is delete the notes by holding down right click and deleting them. Now, if you deleted a note that you liked, uh, you can you might be tempted to click Control Z and think that you fixed it. And it's true, it does work for one mistake, but let's say I wanted to go back more than one undo. If you wanna go back multiple uh, undos, you're gonna have to hold Control Alt Z. And this is something that, uh, well, it records everything that you've done in the program will record up to that point. And then by holding off of Alt, it'll undo all those things. So I know that that's a little confusing. It's a little different than most programs. Uh, Control Alt Z is undo, and then just Control Z is redo. That's the way you have to think about it for FL. It's a little hard to get used to, but that's how that works. The next thing uh, I guess we could talk about is probably selecting multiple notes at the same time. Uh, if you hold down Control and then left click, it'll bring up the selection menu, which allows you to select a bunch of notes here. And we can move all these at the same time. And then the last tool I think that we need to know before we start making melodies is just the slice tool. So right up here, on this row, you, you're going to see all the tools I've been using so far. So we have the select tool here, which I do use control left click as a shortcut. You have the slice tool here, which is if you if you want to know the shortcut, I believe it's shift right. Nope. 
Never mind, I don't know what it is. That's okay. Um, you can just use a knife tool up here and use that to slice um, notes. And then that's really helpful if you're trying to slice many notes at the same time. And then finally, what we have is the mute tool, which allows us to mute notes. You've got a bunch of tools up here that you can mess around with, which will be really helpful for when you're making melodies. Without further ado, I think that we should try to make a chord progression. We should actually uh, start making a melody, and I think uh, the piano roll will become more familiar to you as we keep using it over and over again. What we're going to do is we're just going to delete these two notes I have over here, and we're going to start off by moving a note in the range of C, halfway from C3 to probably a little above C4. I want to make a bass line. I'm going to take a note, and I'm going to just click it down here like so and I'm going to stretch it um, all the way from the first number one all the way to two I want it to be one bar long a bar is gonna be from any one number to the next number is gonna be see be signified as one whole bar and so that's the length I want my notes at this moment After we click this we're gonna just try to make a baseline so I'm gonna place a few notes after each other and we're gonna see if we can make a decent sounding baseline real quick Okay, so I made a very simple bass line and the way I did it was just by placing a one note after the other and I kept one rule which allowed me to make sure that I was making um, pretty good choices and that was I only placed notes on the highlighted rows and then the non-highlighted rows are notes which are going to be off key. This is really helpful for when you're starting off and you don't know music theory. It can be really helpful to, to know which notes are the right notes and which ones are the wrong ones just by staying in one key for your song. Here, I, as you can see, if I just take away these notes now, it doesn't pop up these highlighted rows. But as you start placing them, it, uh, I believe it's three notes is the minimum. It tries to make a scale based off the notes you placed. And you can see it, it keeps changing based off of where you move the notes. And then you can place those notes in there and it will make you a scale. I'm going to undo all that for so far. And we're going to go back to what we had before. And this is what I ended up making. Now, I recommend that you guys make your own bass lines. You don't need to copy mine exactly, but if you're struggling to make one, you can uh, copy it now. I'll leave it up here. And then right after that, we're going to start and try to make some chords. Okay, so now we are going to place uh, just one note above each of these bass lines. So we're going to take it one step at a time. We have our bass line laid out, so let's just start by adding one note at a time to each one of these. Just ask yourself, does that sound good or should it be somewhere else? Okay, that sounds good to me. So we can leave this note here and let's go to the next chord. Okay, cool. So we got the first two uh, already sound pretty good. And I just chose those by finding a highlighted row and just choosing one that I thought sounded good. So we have this so far. That doesn't sound so good to me. So we're going to move this probably down. That also doesn't sound good. Let's just mess around with it until we get something we like. And if you don't want to listen to the whole thing every time, you can actually left click up in this top row and it will move the playlist slider to wherever uh, you want to listen to. So like, let's move it just in the middle right here and play. Okay, that doesn't sound good. Now you can attempt to move it on to a row that's not highlighted just to see if it sounds good and it possibly could. So you saw there, I actually knew that when I moved this note to this uh, darker highlighted uh, square, it was going to uh, actually make it a highlighted row because um, I knew I, I know a little bit more about how the how the key was going to work. So that just comes from experience. But sometimes the key can change, and you can actually put a note on a darker row, and it will actually change it into a highlighted row because it realizes that you're using a different scale. So that's something to keep in mind. So it's not always wrong to use the not not highlighted rows. It can actually be beneficial sometimes. Let's listen to this all the way through. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to add just one note on top of all of these, and then we'll have a good chord progression here. Could do something like that. Uh, I'm going to experiment with a couple other things, and I'll get back once I have something I like. 
Okay, cool. So I made something I liked here, and this is what it sounds like. Sounds pretty dramatic. The uh, way I did this was I simply just took uh, one step at a time, we made our bass line, then we added one note on top of it, and just made sure that every step of the way I was making choices that I was happy with that I thought sounded good. And then by the end of it, you can have a product that you like. Sometimes it could be a little bit daunting to say, hey, we're going to make an entire chord progression. But if you just take it one note at a time and just make sure that one note sounds good after the other note, you can start building things a lot more quickly uh, and not worry too much about the big picture. And that's how I was able to make this chord progression because I was just making sure that every step of the way I was making choices that I thought benefited the whole. So, all right, now that we get our chord progression, what I want to do is start adding some instruments to this pattern to make it uh, more full. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go back to my channel rack up here and I'm going to click the plus icon and we're going to add in another instance of flex. From here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna navigate to another instrument which can act as a baseline for our chord progression. So I'm gonna go to the string section here and I'm just gonna choose the bass sustain preset because I think that will be a good base for our chord progression. So I'm gonna click the X icon here. And then right now, if we go back to our channel rack from before, you can see that we now have a second instrument um, um, in our channel rack. So we have the closed grand piano and we have our bass sustain. So the way that we can start adding notes to the bass sustain to our um, initial pattern with the chord progression is by going back to the piano roll here and clicking up in this little drop down menu, you're going to see that you can choose the other instrument. So I'm going to click bass sustain and then we'll be in the uh, instrument bass sustain, but in the same pattern. So if I click play, we're still going to hear the piano, but now when I put a new note, it's going to make the bass sound. As you can see that right there. So what we're going to do is if you don't see these uh, ghost notes right here, we need to go up to this corner and go to view and then make sure ghost channels are enabled. If I disable that, you'll see that these notes disappear and you can't see where your other instruments notes are. And so I find it pretty helpful to have the ghost channels enabled. That way I can always see where um, I need to place my notes. So the next question we have to ask ourselves is where we are going to place the bass notes. And for this, um, I'm going to navigate back to the piano. And I'm just going to copy all the lower notes on our chord progression and use those as the bass notes for our string section. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to hold control shift and then I'm just going to hover over and we're using left click and I'm just going to while I'm holding control and shift, I'm just going to select each one of these notes like so. And sometimes it can be a little bit weird and you'll have to click the note. I don't know why it does that, but sometimes it could be a little finicky, but uh, hit control C once you have all those selected and then we're going to navigate back to the bass section and click control V. And if all is well, it should pop up right in the exact same spots. And if it's a little bit off, you can just move those to make sure they're on properly. Now let's listen to what that sounds like. Awesome, so now we have a bass section which we can use uh, to supplement our chord progression. From here, I'd like to add a melody on top of our chord progression. And I think that that will really get us in a position where we can start working with patterns in the next chapter. So what we're going to do to make a melody is go back to our channel rack right here and we're going to hit the plus icon again and we are going to go back to flex you guessed it and we're going to find something that can make us a good um a good instrument for a melody so i'm going to navigate to maybe I'm not exactly sure maybe we could do like a wind instrument I'm not exactly what we want i'm sure what we want here but technically it doesn't matter what we pick i'll just do a tuba i don't know why but we'll just use a tuba, why not? So from here, uh, we're just gonna navigate to the tuba instrument. And then if I click a note, you'll hear the this instrument. And I'm just gonna make these notes a lot shorter. So I'm gonna drag this here, make it smaller. And let's just make a, uh, a rhythm for our melody. So the way I, I go about making my melodies is I wanna keep the rhythm consistent. To give you guys an example, let's just play a rhythm here by clicking in some notes and then I'm going to just control click copy and then I'm going to shift click this and we'll duplicate it and then shift click again duplicate shift click duplicate you don't you don't have to do this right now basically I'm just showing you guys this to teach you guys how I think about my melodies when I'm uh, making music so let's listen to what this sounds like Okay, cool. So right here, what we have is we have every single bar 
we are playing the same rhythm. So we have one note, one note, one note, and then two smaller ones. And then as you can see, the pattern repeats itself. And this in the listener's ear is going to create a, a pattern in the memory, which will make it so it doesn't sound like the melodies all over the place because they can, they can hold on to a rhythm, which is it's catchy. This is what makes it catchy, but it, it becomes repetitive if I just have this on one note. So to make a melody not repetitive, you need to keep the same rhythm or at least keep it uh, moderately similar. And then you have to change the notes in ways that are, uh, and this, this comes a, a little bit with time is you kind of know how to change it in a way that doesn't sound too chaotic, but a way that sounds enough to give the listener something interesting to listen to. So why don't we start by moving these notes around like this? Like I'm going to just move this one a little bit down. And then maybe we don't have these two notes here. We just, we just delete them. And then, so to copy this, I want, so, okay. The way I think about this is kind of fractally. If you, if you've ever seen fractals before, you know how they kind of like, you can zoom in and it's the same pattern and you can zoom out and you see a bigger pattern. And so I think about melodies in a, in a fractal way. It really helps me think about how I want things on the bigger and smaller scale looking like a cohesive whole. So the way that I'm going to do this is I, you see how I have the, I, at first I had the rhythm exactly the same for each bar. And then in the second bar right here, I deleted these last two end notes. So what am I gonna, gonna do for the fourth bar? I'm also gonna delete these two end notes because it matches the, the uh, second bar. So I, if, you, if you right click on this uh, bar with the numbers, you can actually uh, highlight a section which will repeat itself. So if, if I click play here. So I'm going to be doing this often to show you guys the way I'm thinking about my melodies. So in this case, you can see at first I had each bar repeating the rhythm exactly the same, which was initially this, this pattern right here, which I, um, and I repeated that four times. Now, as you can see, I have a, a rhythm, which is two bars long. And, you, and you're probably wondering, why is it two bars long? Well, remember I made that change on the second bar where I took off these notes and then this entire pattern repeats itself because on this second bar, I also take off these two notes. And if you need to remember what a bar is, it's from this number to this number. So these two bars act as a one big pattern. And then that the second two bars re repeat this first two bars pattern. Okay. Hopefully you guys are, are not having too much trouble uh, following along. A lot of the stuff I don't, no, because I can write it on a piece of paper or because I read it in a book. It's, it's trying to explain to you the type of things that you learn by experience. And these things are very difficult to kind of like condensate in the words at times. So I'm sorry if it sounds like a little bit confusing, I'm really trying to boil down like what's going on subconsciously to you guys. And it can be difficult sometimes. So I think it really, it comes from making a lot of bad melodies over and over again, and then noticing just one thing that made the melody sound good. And then remembering that for next time. And then over time, you build up these experiences, which allow you to make uh, helpful and good changes to your music. And so sometimes even when I'm doing a full course like this, I can, I can sort of walk you through what I'm doing, but you are going to have to try to make your own melodies. You are going to have to make a lot of bad melodies to really understand like how to make good melodies. And that's just how everything in life is. You really just need to put in time and experience in these things. So if you're struggling off the bat, don't worry. I, I didn't have, I didn't even know about rhythm or anything when I was making melodies. I was just clicking notes all over the place and that actually sounded kind of good, but I was placing notes all over the place and yeah, it was just really bad. So if, even if you start with this bare, it just uh, like, if you get 10% out of what I'm saying about melodies right now, you'll already be ahead of where I was when I started. So just, I think you, it, it might sound complicated now, but I think you're, you'll be okay if you, if you just take a little bit away from this, even if you don't understand everything I'm saying. So in the second half of the melody, what I'm going to do is I want to repeat the third bar. I want to repeat in the first bar. So I'm just going to copy the notes, honestly. Okay. And then in the second part, I already know what I want to do. So what I want to do is I just want to have it. Something like that, maybe. Okay. Let's listen to what this sound like. So 
what was my thought process and how did I make a melody without even listening to it and knowing that it would sound good? How, what are the rules that I employed to get something that was going to sound decent no matter what? The way I think about these melodies is that I have a structure which I apply and it applies to the rhythm, but it also applies to the pitch of the notes. So this is called a A, B, A, C melody. Okay. So from bar one to two, this is A. From bars two to three, this is B. From bars three to four, that's A. And from bars four to five, that's C. And so why is it called A, B, A, C? Well, because A matches, uh, the A here matches this A right here. And the C matches in rhythm. I mean, the B matches in rhythm C. However, it differs in where the notes are placed, okay? And so it could technically, you could say that this is A, a, B, A, B, because the rhythm doesn't change from two and four, but I'm just saying it's A, B, A, C because I changed the notes. That may not be technically correct, but I hopefully you're following along with my thought process here. So what do I do? I don't want the listener to be all over the place. If I want the listener to be all over the place, here's what I do. Okay, we're gonna do this as an example to show you how melodies can get confusing. So. I didn't put anything on any wrong notes. I didn't actually choose any specifically wrong notes in this melody, okay? I know I'm technically putting one on this darker highlighted. Don't worry about that. That's technically not an incorrect note. I can explain that later, but just roll with me. So. So it, nothing's wrong about this. It's just hard to follow, okay? Because it doesn't repeat itself in any meaningful way. There's no pattern here. Like sure, some of the rhythm stays the same, but it's it's very difficult to follow. And there's, there's lots of wrong things about this melody. And I use wrong in quotations because you can get a lot of, away with a lot of stuff in music, okay? So let's talk about why this melody doesn't work. Okay, why does this melody not work? Sure, a lot of the rhythm stays the same. Like you always have it start with three um, quarter bar note lengths. And then you have that here. And then you also have that here. I hate that note. Okay, so we have that continuity. Okay, so it has somewhat of a pattern, right? But what's the problem? It doesn't repeat the same pattern ever. Like it's always playing different notes. So there's nothing that stays the same. So this is fantastic right here because it, it may not be like a, a, like a hit song melody, but it sounds good. It sounds good enough because you have these two things repeating each other. So I have a little bit of, of continuity. So you can kind of hear a pattern in your head. Okay. So I could even, if I didn't want to repeat it exactly, I could do something like this. I could, this might not sound as good, but you could try something like this. Like, yeah, that works too. But like, you see how like the closer you can keep it while only making slight changes, it, you have to, this is where that you, you have this balance, right? This balance between novelty and chaos because you want it to sound, well, you have, it's like novelty, boring and chaos. Okay. Something like that. You have like this three thing going on because it could either be all over the place where nothing makes sense. You either have everything super boring and the listener like wants to turn off your song, or you have to strike this medium where you're doing something that's interesting without making the listener feel like they have no idea where they are. Okay. And then this is something that, like I said, it, it's going to take feel It's going to take time and you are going to have to mess up and you have to be okay with messing up. Okay. So yeah. I, melodies are going to be the, are always going to be difficult because no matter, I've seen producers that are professionals, people who know the software front to back and they cannot make a melody to save their life. And that's okay. Okay. They're, they're fantastic producers in a lot of different ways, but melodies are something that not everyone gets, but if you put in time and effort, and if you're really struggling, if you, I would recommend learning a little bit of music theory, and that can also benefit you if you don't have it as much of a natural musical ear for melodies, but so I just don't want you guys to be discouraged because once we hit melodies that I knew this was going to be in melodies and chords, especially these can, things can take a long time to develop an ear for. And 
Honestly, I can't give you guys the rules for everything. I can't do the exact steps on how to become a music producer because there are no exact steps to becoming a music producer. It's a non-linear process. The best I can do is teach you the steps on how to use the tools, how to navigate the tools and try to give you the best advice I can to try to get you in a place to where you can have the type of mindset to where you can do these things. Um, okay, hopefully I'm not rambling for too long. I just really wanted to encourage you guys because uh, I know that making melodies is difficult and I know making chords is difficult and I just didn't want somebody watching this video to feel like they were really struggling and watching me make these chords and melodies and they're like, I don't know what this guy's doing. I can't do this. I suck at music production. Please don't quit. Please don't quit. If you if you didn't have a corporation or melody figured out yet, it's okay. Okay. Just copy the one I have and we can move from there. I want you guys to have something finished, even if it is somewhat of mine, maybe you could change it and just tweak it in a few different ways to make it something your own and that's fine. But like, yeah, I just don't want you guys to get discouraged because I know I'm throwing a lot at you and that's there's a lot more that we have to go through. So hopefully you guys can stick around and this wasn't too much. So let's move on to the next section and just uh, try to take it a little bit more slowly. The next section is going to be easier. So it'll give you a little bit of a breather from working on more difficult uh, making melodies that can be quite, quite tiresome if you're struggling with it. So uh, without further ado, let's move on to the next chapter. Okay, in this chapter, I'm really excited because I remember in the last chapter, I mentioned the way that uh, I think about music production in a fractal way. And so I want to show you guys why I think of music production like this. And to do this, what we're going to do is go to this square right here. That's left of the piano roll. So remember, we have our channel rack here. Left of the channel rack is our piano roll. And left of the piano roll is our playlist. And the playlist is very similar to the piano roll in a lot of ways. And you'll see this immediately because we can still use this top bar to navigate left and right, just like the piano roll. Same with the vertical bar, same with uh, increasing horizontally and increasing vertically. So it has the same controls, uh, the navigation as a piano roll. But what type of notes are we going to be placing in here? Well, the thing is, this is not uh, where we're placing notes. This is actually where we're placing our patterns. So the pattern that we made with our all the instruments, I can actually click in here. And then you remember when I clicked, uh, I changed it from song to pattern up in this play button. Now, if I click it on song, it's going to uh, take the it's actually going to play our pattern here. So that's what that the that's what the distinction is between these different types of play buttons. So if I go to song and I click play or space bar. So you can see what the playlist is used for. This is where we are taking our patterns. This is where the music gets made, essentially. This is where everything happens. So I'm gonna show you guys a super cool trick, which is going to allow you to make things really quickly. So I already showed you how to use one pattern to make um, all the different um, instruments fit together into a cohesive whole. But you're probably thinking right now, okay, Tristan, how am I going to do anything? All my instruments are bunched together in this like same pattern. What am I going to do? I understand that. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click the pattern one and we're going to go to split by channel. And what this is going to do is that this is going to split and name for us all of our instruments that we have. So now you, they're all kind of laid on top of each other. So we're just going to delete all of them. Okay. And if we click this and add it in here, then click this one, add it in and click this one and add it in. Now we can see each one of these is actually one of the patterns that we made from before and it split it up for us essentially. So now like for instance, I could take out the piano. Maybe I want to undo that and I want to take out the melody. And hopefully this is very intuitive and you can see how many parallels there are to the piano roll. So just like in the piano roll, I could click a second one and I could repeat the pattern over again and maybe uh, later in the song, I want all the instruments to come together, but earlier in the song, I, I don't want as many elements together. So maybe that's how I, I want my song to be. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to restructure this. So I'm going to hold shift and middle mouse scroll wheel, and I'm just going to move this melody to the top. I, I like to have my melodies on top, my chords in the middle and my bass lower because I'm pretty OCD and I like things to be organized. So this is an easy way for me to organize things. So again, that was just holding shift, hovering over where it says track one or whichever one you want to move. Uh, for me, it was track one. And if it just scroll wheel, I can actually move this up and down. It's a quick little, it's just a quick little uh, shortcut. You don't need to remember this. It's, it's something that 
is not necessary. It's just something I do to organize stuff fast. So right here, let's just listen to what we have in our playlist. So I was just clicking. I was literally just clicking these patterns right here. These are all the patterns that we made. I was just clicking them in just like notes. Okay, so. This is just the basics of how we can lay out in our playlist different um by the way this is what this is called so the piano roll is where we put the notes in and where we where we click in notes and then the playlist is where we click in patterns so and it's the same controls so just like you can split notes you can also split patterns so it's the, it's literally the exact same thing as the piano roll it's just applied to the entire pattern so hopefully that's that's helpful for you guys to understand um i guess the one thing i didn't really explain is that right here this is in this like row uh this is where all your patterns are stored so before we just had one pattern and so that's why there was no reason to come to the playlist because everything that you were working with was in the panel roll but now since i split everything up if i double click on any of them it's going to open back up the panel roll and it's just going to open up this instrument you can see here that if i go back to my bass my bass isn't here anymore and my melody isn't here because these patterns are separated now. I separated them into separate ones. So if I click on the tuba, you can see that the tuba has a check mark because that's the only, and these don't have check marks because there's no notes in them. What I want you to take away from this chapter is just the similarities between the playlist and between the piano roll. And I hopefully by connecting these two different parts of the software and seeing the similarities between them, it should become uh, pretty apparent in, in your head how they are connected. And you can see how a full song could be made. The playlist is just where you put together your song, where you take all the patterns and all the melodies and chords and everything, and where you lay it out into a finished, uh, finished product that's going to be telling a story to the listener. If you get that, you understand the playlist. So without further ado, why don't we go to the next section and start working on what samples are. In this chapter, we're going to be going over samples. A sample is just a sound file that can come in as a wave or MP3. And this is going to be used for something like recording vocals through a mic. You'll be recording it into a sample or recording voice memos on your phone or anything of that uh, sort. So the way that we're going to use samples is by accessing the folder system in FL Studio. So if you look to our left right here, we have this browser column right here. You can see it's uh, browser and you have all these folders here. Now, I already imported a lot of um, folders with my own samples, so you guys aren't gonna have a lot of these. However, if you open up packs right here, this is where you are going to find uh, the default FL Studio samples. So why don't we navigate here and just click through these folders until we find a sample uh, that we can add into our track. That way you guys can understand uh, what they are for. So I'm just gonna click on kicks. And uh, right here, you can see there's this little new icon, and this indicates that you're clicking on a sample. So let's click on a few of these and listen to what they sound like. All right, cool. So I'm going to use FPC 5 kick, and I'm just going to left click, hold, and I'm going to drag it into my project. And you can see there's this little gray highlighted area where I'm hovering with my mouse. And if I just let go anywhere I want, it's going to place this sample. So this sample is going to play uh, just like a note in our piano roll would, except that now it's going to play the sound file once it reaches this point in the song. So, for instance, if we listen here. So that sounded pretty random and out of place. So why don't we find a place to put our kick that actually makes sense in the song and start making it into a type of pattern which would make sense. So there are two ways that we could place this kick in our song. I could, for one, I could delete this right here and I could go and create a new pattern. Um, before I click the new pattern, I just wanna make a one note. So before in this column over here, uh, you'd remember that our, all of our patterns uh, popped up in this column, but now all you see is the sample, the FPC kick, uh, 5 kick that we added in. This is because there are multiple uh, icons here which indicate which um, storage unit you're essentially looking at. So this middle icon is for samples, like the one that we just dragged in. This left icon right here is going to show us our samples, or uh, my bad, our patterns. So if we click here, I can click on one of these and add in, as you can see, uh, that specific pattern. So if I go back here and click on that, I can add in my sample again. So that's just helpful to remember if you ever get lost or forget 
uh, which one's which, that's where that is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our pattern and we're gonna click the plus icon here. And this is a good point in which you can learn how to manually name uh, our patterns just in case you wanna do that and you don't wanna split it like I showed you earlier. So let's just name this drums, if I can spell properly, drums, there we go. And also, why don't we just make it a different color just to show you guys how you could do this. So you could just drag this any color you want and then it will pop up as that color. Uh, make sure you to hit the check icon right here and then boom, it's going to make our pattern and it's going to make it a specific color as well. So this gets into color coding and this is this can be really fun too to do. I don't do it too often since it takes extra time, but if I finish a project and I have nothing else to do, sometimes I'll go back over it and make it look nice. So let's um, before we double click into here, what we're going to want to do is go up to our channel rack right here. And you can see that from when we add in our sample, it actually shows us the sample right here in our um, channel rack. So to see our instruments from before, we need to go to this top bar right here and click all. And now this is going to show all of our instruments and our kick. So there's a couple different um, there's a couple different options. We have unsorted, which shows us essentially the instruments that aren't sorted yet, and then we have audio. And this shows us our samples and then we have all and then this shows us all the different things that we've added into our project you might be wondering okay what else goes in the channel rack the only thing that's going to appear in our channel rack that we haven't gone over yet is automations so automations samples and instruments are the three things that are stored in your channel rack and we'll go over that eventually but for right now we only need to focus on samples so the way we are going to approach this is we're going to right click on the sample and we're going to go to piano roll and now in the piano roll, because we were selected on the drum pattern from before, we'll be placing our, our kick in the drum pattern. So let's go back to the playlist just to reiterate what I just did. So back in patterns over here, I have selected the drums. I go to my channel rack and then I can right click. And if this is checked, it's not going to go into the piano roll. So you have to uncheck it and then check it again. And now we will be in our drum pattern with the specific sample that we have. So I, I, I was debating whether or not to show you guys this, but I am going to show you the way uh, doing it like this, even though I don't do it myself. So you may be wondering like, wow, this is extremely confusing and I don't really want to put in samples like this. Um, if you're thinking that uh, and you don't want to do it this method, then that's fine. If you'd like to keep everything in patterns, I'm going to show you this method just so that you have another uh, way of producing that I know some people enjoy more. Um, so just so I can give the full breadth of how you can use FL Studio because not all producers produce the same. What we can do here is just place a kick and as you can see the kick actually it pitches up and down the sample um depending on where we place the note so that's also a pretty cool feature e5 is going to be the default pitch of the sample just so that you guys know i'm going to place a kick right on the first beat on the i'm going to place it midway between one and two and then i'm going to place it on actually you know what let's leave it like that and i'll show you guys a little trick here so what could we do I could keep keep going with this pattern like this, but if I know I'm already going to do that pattern, there's no sense in me uh, manually drawing in the notes. I can just do this. I could take the pattern, shorten it down, and then copy it just like that. And so this is a way that, that if you did it like this, it would save you a lot of time. To save even more time, we can navigate. If you remember the tools that we have up here, we can use the paint tool. And paint across just like that we have our entire drum pattern across and so let's listen to what we have right now okay i think that we should take out the kick right here i'm actually going to right click on this sample and we're going to take out the kick here and we're only going to leave it for the second half right here and what i want to do is i want to add in a different sample so i'm going to add in a snare and the snare is going to be our pattern right here. So let's find a snare that sounds good. Now, if you're looking for a sample and it's slow to click every single one, you can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard to quickly filter through them. Okay, so I found a sample that I like. It's simple and it's not too, too crazy. So we're going to use a sample. And this time, rather than making a pattern, I'm going to show you guys the other ways that you can use samples. We're just going to click the sample in. So now I can just click the sample as if it's a note, see I'm selected back on my sample right here. Um, and so if I click this one, I can actually just click and place every uh, every spot I want to sample. So I'm going to zoom in here to make sure I'm placing it in the correct spot. See, I have it when I have it in the right spot here. So let's click, click it here. I believe that's also off a little bit. Okay. And that should be pretty close. Okay, let's listen to this.
Okay, cool. So we have, wait, I actually, is this off? I can't tell. Okay, there we go. I fixed it. <laughs> My bad. Um, all right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to hold shift and we're going to go down arrow. So I'm just, again, I'm going to be using shortcuts and speaking as I use the shortcut to show you guys how I'm doing things quicker. Um, cause I noticed when I was recording these tutorials before I would use a lot of, uh, shortcuts that I are just like wired in because I know how to move around the software really quick. But then I wouldn't explain how I did that. So, oh, I was right the first time. Okay. never mind. Um, yes, but I would use the shortcuts without explaining them. So sorry if explaining the shortcuts is taking a little extra. I want to make sure that you guys know where I'm going in the software. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy these and there's a couple ways that I could copy and paste these across my song. I could hold shift like I did before and showed you guys with uh, the piano notes and just shift click it across. And this method works perfectly fine. However, there's also another method I could use. If uh, I can also right click select this bar. And if you remember what this does, it repeats whatever section of the song I selected here. So we could listen to this over and over again. Uh, but if I actually select all everything that I want from the section of the song and hit control B for duplicate, not duplicate, duplicate, it's going to duplicate it one section over. I don't really know how to explain it, but you just get used to doing this a lot. And this is the way I copy and paste things throughout my song extremely quickly. And yes, so that is another method that you can use to copy paste things across your song. So uh, I'm hoping that what will happen is if I give you I guess, enough enough methods of doing things in the software, you'll latch on to like one or two that you like and you're like, oh, I like the way that he did that. I want to remember that for later. And then you can just come back to this video anytime that you need and just remember what that is and then be able to practice it. That way you can be able to use it. So that's my intention. Let's listen to what we have so far just to see what kind of progress we're making. Now that we've done samples, I think it's time to go to our next chapter and then we can start fleshing this out a bit more. So let's go. Okay, so the plan here is to essentially take all the chapters that we've learned thus far and just repeat them over and over again until we can actually fill up and turn this into a more full song. So. I don't just go through these processes one time through making a song. I know I said at the beginning of the course, you're going to be using all of these, but you are also going to be using them multiple times over. So like when I showed you to open up the channel rack to add an instrument and then layer, maybe I don't just want one piano. Maybe I want two pianos stacked on top of each other. I'm going to uh, show you guys in the channel rack right here. If remember our piano is called close grand or whichever one you choose, navigate to that one. And then you're going to right click on this piano and then hit clone. And right here, it's going to duplicate our piano instrument. And so here we see that we have the same flex plugin that automatically opened and showing us different, uh, the piano that we chose again. So I'm going to choose a different piano sound here and we're just going to mess around with some stuff. So, okay, cool. So we have this piano sound. I'm going to exit out. We're going to double click on our close grand uh, pattern and it's going to open it back up for us. Uh, control C and then navigate up here. And we're going to go to electric piano and then control V. Okay. Hopefully you guys are following along. And then if we play, see, that's way more interesting. So we just added just one more instrument and it just added just a little bit to, to what's going on here. So I think that, that, that that's cool. Um, we could do this again. So I'm going to duplicate the electric piano again, and then we can add uh, a string instrument. So why don't we add like all strings slow? For instance, we could just mess around with this. And then I'm going to show you guys a super fast method for copying and pasting the chords. So you see where we have in our channel rack, it's if it's showing you the beats like this, you can just click off of that and it'll show you, uh, just make sure you can see these, these patterns right here. Um, what you're going to want to do is click on the square. So you see, we have the pattern here. So if I double click this, it's going to open the pattern in the electric piano. If I double click this, it's going to open up the pattern to my closed grant. But you see the pattern here, it opens up nothing because there's no pattern in there. So what we can do to copy, uh, quickly copy and paste is hit control C on this little 
this little uh, green square right here, you just click it, left click the screen square, control C, and then click on the instrument that you want to paste it into and control V and then boom, it's going to paste the, uh, the same chords in there. So we don't have to manually go in. So let's listen to this. Already sounding way better. Just by adding a few more instruments, it's really adding a lot, I think. Okay, so we have this bass. Uh, I don't want to listen to all these instruments at the same time anymore. I want to listen to just the bass. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to exit out of the channel rack. I'm going to control left click, select all of my instruments here. Then I'm going to use the shift key down arrow a couple times. I want to give myself some room. And then we're going to click on the close grant because if you remember, this is where we added our new instruments. So why don't we split this again? So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to split by channel. And then right here, I just got all my instruments again right here. So as you can see, it split our I'm just left clicking and dragging. It actually puts all the patterns on top of each other. Sort of annoying, but it's all right. And so I miscounted here. So just on track five, right click, delete that track. Boom. And that's just going to delete. Make sure there was nothing in it. And once you delete that, we got this here. So right now, if I right click on any of these green dots, you can actually hear just this individual pattern. Okay, cool. So I think uh, that would be really uh, neat is if we uh, just listen to this part so far uh, of this song. So I right click and then drag uh, just on this, this four bar pattern. So one, two, three, four, these four bars. Um, and then I'm going to right click on this dot again. It's going to unmute all of them. And then we can just listen. Okay, cool. I'm going to double click the electric piano. I'm going to go in here and then I'm going to start changing some of the notes in here. So I want this to be more of like an, an arp. So we're going to start from the lowest note and we're going to keep that the same. So we have all that's fine. Uh, the next note, I'm going to go here. I'm just, and basically this is just me from messing around with stuff. Just saying, okay, what would sound cool if like I changed some stuff and this, like you, uh, you need to give yourself permission to mess around, like to mess stuff up. And if you say, okay, Tristan, I want to follow along with the tutorial though. And I don't want to mess up something. If you want to try something, uh, what you can do is you can actually go up to here and click save as new version. And I do this all the time. So what I'll do is like, for instance, okay, let's say I have this version of the song where it sounds like this. And I'm like, I want to make a major change to the song. What I can do is go up to file, save as new version. And what that's going to do is create a duplicate copy of the entire project where I can mess around on this. And I still have the other copy here. So I still have my tutorial one right there. Boom. I still have that. So that project file just sitting right there. So you can always go back to it. So um, now that we made this new project or made this duplicate project, I feel completely comfortable messing around because it's not going to affect the other project that I was happy with. So here I'm going to change. I'm just going to make some creative uh, decisions here. So I'm going to take these notes and I'm going to just incrementally do this. So I'm actually going to delete that top note because I think it would sound better like this. And so I'm just going to have, I'm going to have a little walking motion. So you see how from in this bar, it's divided into four segments. You have one, two, three, four. And so I'm putting a note walking up the stairs sort of like so each one is going incrementally one quarter of a bar up to the next note and then i'm going to do the exact same thing here so i'm going to add a note here i think that would probably sound good and i'm pretty much just guessing at this point we'll see if it does
Okay, so right now I just was messing around with notes, just listening to it over and over, and I have it repeating. Remember, if I go back to my playlist by clicking here, I select this this portion of the song. That way, I could um, listen to it over and over, and listen to how the melodies play out in this in this part of the song. So, if you see the changes I made, I I didn't have to talk exactly because I'm just messing around, and I, I put some notes in places I didn't like, and I deleted them, and I just changed them, and I just kind of made incremental changes to until I came up with something I was happy with. So. Um, and really I didn't have any rhyme or reason to like what I was doing. It's mostly just like intuition, just clicking. Okay. This is a highlighted note. Let's click here and see if it sounds good. Doesn't sound good. Okay. Put it on a different note and just take your time with stuff and see what sounds good. So, um, some tips I can give to make melodies and arps that sound good is I made sure that I didn't have different, uh, rhythms, uh, for the entire thing. So as I said before, the pattern that this is following is just exactly It's literally this. It never changes rhythm, so it's always doing one quarter bar note. That's the length of every single note. You can see here that the length between each note that plays is exactly one quarter bar. So I kept that consistent through the whole thing. <clears throat> so I was able to change uh, everything on top that was happening and it would sound uh, decent. So another thing that you can see that I did is I kept the bass notes always starting as the first note that hit. Um, and so that was something that I also kept consistent. Uh, and you can see here, I just had the top note uh, also hit with the bass note because I thought it sounded good. So, and yeah, there's not, you can notice that I, okay, so this is something interesting. So you can see that here on the second bar and on the fourth bar, I decided to have the top notes hit. And you can see how there's a pattern there because on the first and third, I have the second lowest note that's the first to play. And on the second and fourth, I have the highest note. So you can see that there's a pattern there. So uh, what's funny is that uh, Mike, when I'm making melodies, my intuition will do things that make sense. And then I can go back and analyze and go, oh yeah, that's why this works because they have, this is a pattern with this. And then this is a pattern with this. And then that's why it works. Okay, cool. So this, pa this melody, if we remember before, uh, with the lettering system would be a, a, B, a, B melody, or I guess it'd be a, B, a, yeah, A, B, A, C, because this is different. Well, they're all different, but if you think about it melodically wise, I'd say it's an A, B, A, C, I think. I really don't know how that works, but I roughly, roughly get it. Okay, anyways, so we got something like this. Uh, we can mess around, so I could I could go control up arrow and just see what it sounds like a uh, octifier. I honestly like it a, an octave down. I think that sounds good. And you know what? Maybe we want to add. Um, okay, so I, I like the way that this is going. I think I want to add another uh, bass instrument here. So I'm just gonna uh, do the same thing. I'm just gonna take this down, drop it an octave, go to my channel rack, find the bass sustain. That's my instrument here. Make sure it's set to all up here, just in case you don't see it. Everything. Right click on the bass, clone, and it's gonna clone my instrument. And I just find a different bass here. So I'm going to go to winds because I think it'd be cool to have some type of brass instrument, like a little, that could be cool. So let's try it. Um, if I click on my bass pattern here, I don't double click. I just single click and then go to my channel rack. It's going to show me that pattern. And remember what I did before, control C, copy that pattern, paste it on the new instrument. I just cloned boom. And then we have that clone. So now if I listen, Okay, so we hear a problem which is happening. I'm adding a bunch of instruments and you hear how it's getting a little bit loud and it's actually kind of hard to hear some of the instruments because you keep adding more. How can we fix this? So this is actually going to get into, I don't know if it's our next chapter that we're gonna do leveling. I think it might actually be, yeah, it is our next chapter. Okay, so this is a perfect segue into our next chapter where I can show you guys briefly what we're gonna do to fix this problem that we run into. Once we keep adding sounds, we actually run into a problem is that everything is getting too loud. So before we head on to the next chapter, I'm just quickly going to split this uh, again by right clicking on the bass sustain, including split by channel. And then that's gonna give me my brass sound here, which I can just make sure that I have right here. And now I have all my instruments and all my patterns laid out and named. Um, if you guys want to color them, it's up to you. Uh, and hopefully you're able to follow along. I know I'm going a lot quicker now because I've already gone over 
all the steps initially to show you how to do these things. So I'm hopefully, I don't want to repeat myself too many times. So what I'm hoping is that if you guys get lost into one, something that I'm doing here, you can always go back to the chapter where I explain it in depth and then you can come back and uh, just see how I did it again. So hopefully, uh, I know I went quicker this chapter, but hopefully you guys are still able to follow along. Now let's get to fixing the volume problem. Okay, so now we're going to take care of this volume issue. It gets very loud once we get to the ninth bar here, as you can see, because we have the most instruments playing at the same time. So how do we change the volume on a very quick basis to just make sure that things sound uh, the way that they should? The way that we're going to do that is we're going to go to the channel rack. And as you can see, we have these little um, uh, things right here, which are these little levers, which allow us to uh, turn them. If I left click and drag, it will let me change the volume. So it's very simple. So like, let's say I go right click on all string slow. And then we see all string slow right here. If I listen to it. And then I muted it. So I want to decide how loud do I want this? And so you never want to change the volume of an instrument individually. Okay. So what do I mean by that? I mean that you should listen to everything in the song at the same time while you're changing the volume to see how it sounds as a whole, because you're not listening to one instrument, you're listening to a whole song. So that's why you want to change the volume of everything. So let's listen to everything and change the volume as we find needed. Okay, just by moving these volume knobs around, I was just messing around with it and I think it sounds a lot better already. So you might be wondering, so what exactly is are these knobs on the left right here? These knobs are for panning. So let's listen to what this sounds like if I pan. Actually, I think it'd be helpful if I just solo just so you guys can hear what it's doing. See, it sounds a little bit weird that it's going uh, to our right and left ears here. So I'm going to make the close grand at the center. So if you ever need to reset this for any reason, just right click on it and click reset and then we'll reset it. So if I turn it here and then click reset, it'll bring it back to the middle. So just a little helpful thing, just in case you messed up something and you wanted it back the way it was. Um, I think that the electric panda would sound good sort of more towards the right ear. So let's pan this a little bit to the right, just a little bit. And then the strings, we can have a little bit to the left and see how this sounds. better okay i'm actually going to change the tuba instrument because i think it sounds weird so why don't we go here and just why what would be interesting why don't we go to a guitar instrument and just try out some of these guitars and then obviously we want to listen to the melody so i'm just going to highlight this part and i'm going to highlight one chord before the melody hits because i want to see how it comes in too Okay, I think that the electric piano actually takes a lot away when this melody comes in. So what if we took out the strings and the electric piano here just by right clicking and see what this sounds like. Okay, I think that we do need the electric piano in there, but I don't like that both these actually maybe it's okay that the melodies are playing. Maybe I can just make it quieter. Um, I guess I'll make the electric piano just slightly quieter for now. That's one way we can do that. Okay.
I, I think it sounded cool, and I like the guitar more than the tuba. Um, and basically, that is just leveling. So it's really simple. The chapter is not too crazy. It's just basically just changing the volume. And uh, I even threw in panning in here. Wasn't going to do that, but I guess we're doing that. That's okay. Um, so yeah, volume and panning. This is very, uh, very simple stuff. So you can just use that if it gets too loud. If the entire project itself, you're like, this entire thing is too loud for me to listen to. All you have to do is go up while you're listening and you can turn this volume just down like that. And that this changes the entire volume of the entire track. And there's a couple other things up here that uh, maybe we could go over now. Uh, we have another uh, another option up here called BPM. Uh, so this is going to change the beats per minute of the song. So if I don't hover over the right side of these tiny numbers, but over the left side, and you can see it slows down our song or it can speed it up. See, so like I, I had it at 140 initially, so I'm going to keep it there. But um, yeah, you could change the BPM if you don't like the BPM. Uh, and then this is the master pitch. I never use this, but it's here. Actually, you know what would be? Uh, I have an idea for this later. Uh, we might try something with that. Um, okay. Well, now that the chapter's over, we're going to move on to the next chapter. And I will see you guys there. Okay, awesome. So I think that what we can do here is just work on a chorus for the song. So this isn't necessarily, this is going to be another uh, fleshing out chapter. So I have, I have a lot of chapters where like, it's going to be over a certain part, but I'm realizing that I need more where I'm just actually working on the song. So I think what would be really neat is if we have the drum sort of kind of uh, getting a little bit more intense here and then building up into some sort of like chorus that could be interesting and unique here. So why don't we have the drums start building up, building up here? Hmm. Interesting. Um, okay. So I'm trying to think about what I want to do here. Let's go to packs and snares. Okay, so um, we're going to make a... You know what, we're going to go over everything. So I'm kind of, uh, at first we were kind of making something like some orchestral stuff. Uh, and I never make this type of music. This is just something that I guess just sort of happened as I was just making stuff. Um, but like, what if you wanted to make EDM music? I have no idea what you guys want to make. Maybe you want to make hip hop. So why don't we just start making some different genres in the song? I'm not exactly sure what you guys are going to want to make. So we'll just kind of do everything. So how about, uh, here's, here's kind of my plan for the song. I'm not sure exactly what you guys think, but I'm going to have it be this kind of orchestral intro and then it's going to drop into some like EDM drop randomly. It's going to be really weird. And then after that EDM drop, we can go into like some hip hop, uh, and then maybe just close it out like that. And then we can go to the next chapter where we're going to start building this, uh, all together. So this chapter, this could just be lengthy. I, I guess, uh, this chapter I'm going to take the most time and I'm just going to start working on different parts of the song. So uh, what I want is, you, you know, when you hear EDM songs, they always have like that buildup. It's like, and then it goes up faster and faster. We need that. So we're going to put the snare here. Okay, that's perfect. So we're just going to turn down the volume of the snare by double clicking the sample. Um, I'm not, oh, you know what? My bad. I deleted this video. I had a part in the course where I was showing you guys how to do this. My bad. I forgot to include it. Okay. So this is something I, I should just briefly cover. So when you add a sample in here and you need to change the volume of a sample really quickly, there's a fast way of doing that too. Now, yes, you could go to the channel rack and turn it down here. That's true. Um, I just find myself more often than not, uh, actually changing the volume here. And okay. So this is actually kind of confusing. So if I double click the sample here and I change the volume here, it's, it actually does change the volume there. So yes, uh, there's, a lot of these knobs in FL Studio are kind of linked, so it's just whichever one you find yourself using more often. I find it faster to double click on the sample and then just turn the volume down here, but it, it is changing the volume here, just so you know. So let's turn down the volume. Okay, 
All right, so I just changed the volume in the sample editor. So we're gonna go over the sample editor a little bit later, uh, but this is something uh, interesting, which I kind of want to go over with you guys soon. Okay, so I like this pattern. What, what's going on here? So I'm gonna just control left click the snares, shift, uh, shift and then left click, and that's gonna copy them. Shift left click again, and I'm just duplicating this pattern bigger and bigger and bigger. So now we have it like this. Perfect. And I'm just going to add a snare here and it's just going to kind of make it a little bit more intense. And then we're going to kind of double up the snares here. So it's going to go like. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to take all these patterns by selecting them and then I'm going to right click and just drag them a little bit shorter so that it ends kind of like this. Okay, cool. So we got something like that. And so we have some sort of build up for like some type of EDM drop. <laughs> this is hilarious. I don't know what I'm making right now. Um, so um, I think that this is also important. If you if you work on a lot of different genres, you're going to improve greatly. So if you just stick in one genre, um, your music may kind of get stifled. I find myself, uh, the times I improve the most is when I completely switch what I'm making and I make something completely different. And then I learn a lot from uh, that experience. So uh, also spending time, spend time with people that don't make the same music as you do. Uh, if you find producers online and just hang out with them and collaborate and make all kinds of different music with different people, you'll improve so much. I can promise you that. So uh, I'm just going to shift clip up arrow uh, and move that to the track above so that we have all our snares together here. Sweet. And now I think that we're ready. Uh, and by the way, again, this is just trial and error. I was just clicking these. I zoomed in here and just click these snares until it sounded good. So uh, you guys can, as I said, if you need to copy what I'm doing, just to uh, keep along with the project, that's completely fine. Um, but yeah, I, I encourage you guys to, to mess around. Okay. Even if it doesn't sound good, it's still better. I would say it's better. You're in a better spot if your song sounds like 10 times worse than mine, if you're doing something that you're doing rather than you have something that sounds identical to mine, because that means that you're probably not learning very much. And I, I can understand the want and need to, when you're learning something new to follow everything exactly. But if you can take a little, uh, little jump out here and there and get out of your comfort zone and do something that I'm not doing, it'll really help you uh, learn from your mistakes and also figure out things that you didn't know before. So uh, I'm just going to keep pushing that like the entire course is to push you to guys to do stuff on your own. Uh, cause I, I know, I remember when I was in college, we'd have uh, people, uh, that would just follow literally everything down to the wire and they never improved ever. And it was uh, really sad to see because like the people who messed up and got actually failing grades in the beginning of the course, they were the people who wanted to try out different stuff and then they would end up coming back and being way better and were able to do anything that they needed. Uh, so that's, that's something interesting that I kind of learned at college. And I think it, it definitely applies to music production as well. Okay. Enough talking. Let's just make an EGM drop here. So what am I going to do here? I'm going to copy these chords. So I'm going to double click on this, uh, this pattern and I'm just going to get rid of this red line at the top there. I'm going to control C control. Uh, I'm not going to control V. I'm just going to copy this. I want the chords. So I'm going to copy them uh, for now. Um, and what do we do here? Why don't we add a new pattern? So I'm going to click the plus icon and I'm going to name this EDM chords. Cool. And we're going to click this right here and just stretch it. And then this is where I want my EDM chords to play. All right, now let's add a synthesizer. So let's go to Flex. And I guess we're just gonna use Flex for everything because it's it's such a good plugin that it really works for everything. Uh, well, we can mess around with some other, actually, you know what? Let's not use Flex. That would be the easy way out. Let's use, let's use a different instrument. Let's mess around. Let's use, uh, what can we use here that you guys have? Um, let's see. I, the thing is, I actually don't remember. I know flex is for sure in the free version of FL Studio, but I don't remember if some of these other ones are, um, I forgot. Okay. You guys will have to see you. Uh, so there's a bunch of other, so you see how it's had the category says synth here. You can click on these. So like we could use GMS, this plugin, it looks really weird, but we could use this plugin to make, uh, some chords, but I'm not sure if you guys have this, the free version of FL. So yeah. Okay. Just to play it safe. I, actually, I am going to use flex just because. I know for a fact that you guys have this plugin. So, okay. 
So what am I going to do here? Let's go to Arc Sun Cityscape and just click on the first thing here. I think this one sounds pretty good. So let's uh, now what I'm going to do. Um, if you. Uh, OK, so I'm just going to make sure I'm selected on this pattern Our EDM chords. I'm going to go to our channel rack and then I'm going to C70s bounce where uh, our pattern uh, where I want to put my chords in. I'm going to right click, go to piano roll. Here we go. Copy and paste. And now we have this. Uh, let's just listen to the pattern. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, cool. So this is what we have right now. Okay, that's super lame. Um, okay, let's see if there's other instruments because that one's really, yeah, it's not very, not very fantastic. Hmm. Let's mess around here. Okay, interesting. Now you guys don't know, uh, aren't gonna know why I'm telling you to click these off, but just click uh, the power button on this, the power button on this, and then I'm going to mess around with these knobs and I'm going to see how I can change the sound to sound uh, to something cooler. Now, I feel like this is a little bit cheating because I already know what all of these do and you guys have absolutely no idea what any of them do. So I give you permission to copy what I'm doing here if you wanna get the same sounding sound that I have. Um, however, I'm going to try to quickly explain what these do, uh, but I'm not going to spend too much time on it because this is going to be part of a different course, which is going to go more in depth into sound design. And I don't want to overload you guys with designing your own sounds uh, in the beginner course, because that's just like really difficult and it takes a lot of trial and error. Okay, so filter, uh, so volume envelopes and filter envelopes, you can think of this as, um, and I haven't taught you guys automation yet. So you guys, I can't even use that as an example. Yeah, this is a big problem. Okay, well, Mess around with these uh, until you get a sound that you like. Uh, I know what these do, so I'm going to just get it the way I want it to sound. So I already know what I want it, uh, what it to sound like. So I'm going to just change, change it to the way I want it. Um. Okay, perfect. Uh, I like that. What does this sound like? Perfect. Okay. I like that. All right. Now we're going to mess around with some stuff. So there's this cool thing called chop. Uh, if we go to this wrench right here and click chop. Okay. Why don't we go to this drop down arrow and we can click different uh, presets here and we can try out different chopping methods. That one sounds really bad. I'm just gonna see if there's any that sound decent here. I don't like the way any of these sound, so I'm actually going to make my own. So remember how I said the one and the three and the two and the four, uh, how that, that certain pattern. So we're going to copy that. So I'm going to control C control or uh, and uh, no, wait, my bad. Sorry, not control C control shift, left click, select all these, select all these. And then I'm going to show you guys, uh, some really neat, quick shortcuts. So I'm going to drag all these short and it's going to let me drag all of them at the same time. I'm going to make it one eighth of a bar long. And then I'm going to shift left click and it will copy everything so I can make my own. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing here. I'm going to copy these notes like so. And then I'm going to do this. It's going to go do 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 do.
Okay. And as you, this is a perfect time to, this is a perfect time to show you guys, uh, what the A, B, A, B or A, B, A, C thing I was talking about. Cause you can see how the rhythm is the same with one and three and how the rhythm is the same with two and four. So this is a great example of how you can build patterns that your listeners can listen to and not get distracted by what's going on. So I use a lot of shortcuts to make this really quickly and you know how long it would be, it, how painfully long it'd be if I sat here and clicked each one of these individually and there's no way I'm going to do that. So we're going to be using shortcuts that way uh, I can teach you guys the right way to be using FL to be more efficient and not teaching you guys how to click in each one of these because that just takes so long. Okay, so now we have something a lot more interesting. Okay, here's what we need. We need to right click, select all this. Um... And then I'm going to duplicate, I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to clone it. And then I'm going to copy and paste these chords into the second instance of this instrument. And then I'm going to change the instrument. Ooh, that sounds cool. Okay. Hold on. So I'm going to do the exact same thing as before, but I am going to mute the instrument. So I'm going to go to my channel rack and I'm just going to click on this. And now we're only listening to the new clone instrument that we added in. Because remember, Illumi, Illumin Sun, however you say that. That was the first instrument that we we're making the pattern with. I just clicked on this little green dot, muted it. Now we have this one. And let's just make this the way I said before. I take off delay, take off reverb by clicking the power buttons. Move this down. Drag this. Okay, I'm going to enable this back. All right, we're going to clone it again. Now, now we're flying. We are flying Mach 10 speed right here. Okay, so let's copy and paste it here again. We're going to mute both of these, and then we're going to listen to this one, and we're going to find another cool something. That actually sounds really cool. Okay, what does this sound like all together? Cool. I actually want this to be like an octave up. So like, what if I took this, made it an octave up like this? Perfect. Okay, and then I'm just going to turn this volume way down like this. Perfect. Okay. And then I'm going to make a base. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to any of these patterns. Just click it, uh, go to the bottom here. We're going to copy all these notes by control shift, uh, left click, copy all the notes. Okay. I don't know. It's being weird there. I just, yeah. Okay. Control C. Then we're going to go to our channel rack. We're going to go to the plus icon. We're going to go to flex archangel cityscape. I'm going to just click one of these presets right here. I'm going to go to my playlist i'm going to click the plus icon i'm going to name it base uh then i'm going to put it right here lengthen it chain rack right click piano roll on the base control v and now we have this okay now what's super cool with baselines if you have this like little octave thing going up so like what i want to do is i want to take every like second note here and then this middle note and i'm just going to control shift left click all these notes i'm going to do control up arrow and this is something i kind of do in a lot of my more like dance songs is i'll do this and it sounds like this let's see and obviously i'm using all stock plugins and i'm using just presets so like this is like very beginner producer stuff like obviously in my more advanced courses i'm gonna show you guys how to sound design all your own songs or sounds all your own uh samples everything we're gonna go through all that uh so if you're somebody who's already used fl and for some reason you're watching a beginner course yes i know all this stuff is insanely easy and what i'm doing is I'm just trying to get somebody who's never used music production before to get a grasp on how they can begin making music, even if it's with presets and samples and loops and all kinds of stuff, because what's important is that you have a grasp of how to make 
what's important is that you have a grasp on how to make songs before you start going into nitty gritty details. So with this, I made this baseline and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go click on this baseline right here. That way it's selected. We're going to clone the bass. We're going to make a second bass instrument. I'm going to control C. I'm going to control V. And then we're going to mute the first, this one with the pattern. And we're going to find. Okay. So I'm also going to mute the chords up here. All right, let's find something. Perfect. Let's listen to this together. That just sounds really good. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it like that, honestly. Um, I don't even need to change anything. Let's listen to it. Okay, the only thing missing is that I need a melody. So I'm gonna control shift uh, and then shift down arrow, and then we're gonna make a lead on top of here. So, all right, I'm gonna double click the tuba staccato. Whoops. It's not a tuba anymore. It's actually a chill guitar, so that's a little confusing. But uh, I'm gonna control C, just copy this melody, go back to my playlist. I'm gonna hit the plus icon up here, pattern. I'm gonna name it melody. And obviously, I'm going faster just because these are all things that we've gone over. Okay, scroll this, lengthen it out. Channel rack. Add a new flex plugin. Actually, yeah, we're gonna do flex again. Anyways, all right, let's add in another flex and let's right click on flex, go to piano roll, and we're in the melody pattern. Uh, let's click control V, it's gonna paste our melody in here. Uh, and then I'm going to just right click, so I'm only listening to this. Okay, let's just try different stuff. Okay, so I have something that sounds interesting, so let's listen to it all together. Okay, cool. Uh, let's control, shift, copy all this, shift. Uh, actually, I'm gonna, so once I select all of these and I have this little red thing above here, I can hit control B with all of these selected and we'll just duplicate it again. All right, now we're gonna do something really interesting, which I haven't showed you guys yet. So we are going to click on this melody and we're going to click make unique. And what that's going to do is it's going to put a number two on this melody. And that means that we can actually change this melody to whatever we want and it won't affect the first version. So now we have this, look at, so it goes. And that, okay, I'm not going to try to sing the melody, but. Whatever. I mean, I'm not really a huge fan of this EDM part anyways, but I think it needs drums because it's, it's lacking. It's lacking right here. So I think we need to go to like a four on the floor beat, kind of have like a little kick snare thing going on. So let's go to kicks. Cool. We're just going to add a kick on every single one of these lines. Just boom, 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 boom. So now it's going to go like this. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna double click on this uh, kick and I'm just gonna click on this out and I'm just gonna make it lower. And I'm gonna click normalize. Uh, I don't really, I'm not gonna go through why I'm doing this, but it's going to make it sound better.
This is interesting. Um, okay. It's really funny, like going backwards, because now I'm using like all like completely basic tools. And so like I'm trying to make something that's like doesn't sound completely terrible with like really basic stuff. So I'm just gonna like, control shift, left click, shift, left click again. Uh let's copy all this over and now we have this. Okay, this this bass is like way too loud, so let's fix that. So let's scroll down a little bit. It's black sting it. Okay, I'm gonna add in a snare. Let's just add in some hi hats. So, so we're gonna zoom in here. Excuse me. We're gonna put a zoom. Uh, we're gonna zoom in here. We're gonna put a hi hat on every other side here. Oh, it's kind of sounded cool. Let's do it like a little double right there. That's kind of, that's kind of, that's a bop right there. Bop, hi-hat melody. Let's go. Oh, whoops. I accidentally, that's funny. I put it one too close. Okay. Oh, I see what I did. Okay. Whoops. See? So I just moved that a little off. So I just got to fix it. All right, there we go. I think it's better now. Okay. Yep. Sure. That's the EDM part. Okay, cool. All right. We're making progress. So what do we got so far? Let's listen to the whole thing. Cause so far I have no idea what I'm making. Okay, this is very interesting. Um, yes, very, very interesting song. So now we're gonna make a hip hop part because you guys need to learn how to make all kinds of different genres. So what should we do for the hip hop part? I kind of like this thing going on here. I feel like this could actually turn into something cool. Okay, so why don't we double click this? Uh, Control C, copy that. We're gonna go back here. I'm just gonna unmute everything by right clicking this uh, green box. We're gonna click the pattern icon. We're gonna go into hip hop parts i can't spell parts there we go okay cool we're gonna put this pattern uh okay so this is interesting so we needed to kind of uh transition out of this em part so let's just Control c and copy all the base stuff and just paste it here so have it something like that. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how to like get out of this part. So maybe I can just kind of delete all this stuff and it just kind of goes like. And it just kind of ends with this last note. Like, yeah, something like that. And then we can go into some type of loop. Do we have loops in the drum packs? I actually have no idea. Oh, we do. No way. Okay, so yeah, click on loops.
These are very interesting. Um, okay, so I haven't really explained loops. So samples, obviously, they're just one sample, and a loop is just a bunch of samples uh, put into a loop, which you can use. And pretty simple. So I could, if I drag this in here, this is going to be a very interesting transition. So we're going from this. Okay, so if if like let's say I drag in that loop and I don't like it, I can actually drag a loop on top of that loop and it will replace it. I mean, that's not typically the type of hip hop drums I would choose, but you know what? Well, let's just roll with it because why not? Okay. So what we have here, we need to add in a hip hop instrument that's going to sound, uh, let's just pick something incredibly cliche. Let's uh, get a flute. So we're going to add in another flex. Um, we're going to go to wind instruments. We're going to go to flutes. Let's do flute staccato. And let's just right click on the flute. Uh, actually, let's make sure we're in our patterns. Let's click on the hip hop part. Let's right click our flute staccato, go to piano roll, copy and paste this in here. And now we have this. Let's go to pattern. Okay, so I need to control C, control V that up because the notes are too low, it's not playing. Okay, that's actually kind of cool. Um, okay, so we're gonna take this hip hop part, we're gonna place it up above here, and now we have this. Okay, this is very interesting. Um, now we need to have a 808 that just like goes, sounds really sick. So let's, uh, what should we do here? Uh, why don't we copy the lower notes on this ARP? Just like so, control C them, and we're gonna go to channel rack again. And finally, we're going to go to flex. Who would have guessed it? Uh, now let's go to mobile tuned 808 bass, and let's just click on like one of these. So let's do the. Ooh, that's clean. I'm just gonna turn the compress up. It's gonna just make it louder. It doesn't sound bad. Okay, cool. Now we're going to go to the flute staccato, and I'm just going to go to our bass instrument. So you can see we've added so many instruments so far. So let's just control V. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna turn down the bass just slightly. And we're gonna try to make like, I don't exactly know what kind of, I don't make a ton of hip hop. So this is gonna be really interesting. Uh, probably gonna get roasted in the comments for making the like, Crappiest hip hop beat of all time using pl stock plugins. Oh. What if it was like this and just kind of like, I don't know, something like this? Hmm. What if it was like something like that? Okay, something like this, maybe? I have no idea. I have no idea. We might make our own drums because I really don't like that drum sample. I'm not going to lie. It sounds really trash. Um, okay, let's just put more of this stuff here. Right now, I'm just doing basically everything, again, that uh, we went over before. Just kind of filling it in as I see fit. So we're just adding a bass line. I'm pretty much doing the same process that I did with the EDM. I'm just changing the instruments to fit the genre, and I'm just trying to make the bass line sound like it fits more with a hip hop song. So I already have listened to tons of hip hop. I've listened to tons of like all different kinds of genres. So I, I already kind of know, okay, I feel like this bass line is going to be more like this in this genre and more like this in this genre. So I'm just kind of changing the bass line based on what I think would sound good. So that's the thought process there. Uh, you know what sound really cool is if we had like a little note here and then it went like really high pitch. Like this. That one went low.
Okay, and we're just gonna repeat this part because I don't wanna keep listening to the EDM part. Uh, and then we're gonna see if there's any... What does it sound like? That's not hip hop. <laughs> That's literally just not at all. Okay, I guess we're sticking with this. Um, that's fine. Um, let's see. Is there anything else I can add to make this more interesting? I could go to channel rack and you know what? Okay, we're actually going to, I'm, without going to channel rack, I'm going to stop adding new instruments because we have a bunch. Uh, let's click on hip hop part. We're going to split this like I did before. We're going to take the, uh, we're going to take the bass boosted and we're going to just put this a lower and we're going to have our melody here. Um, the last thing I want to do is I want to add in some like, uh, you guys will see what I'm about to do. So I'm going to copy the bass notes right here. I'm going to hit control C. We're going to navigate to the brass instrument, the brass right here and do this. Okay. Actually change my mind. I am going to add another instrument. I'm going to add in another flex and it's going to be a brass, but I want it to be staccato. I don't want it to be a lengthy. So we're going to go to full brass staccato. And from there, I'm going to go back, navigate back here. I'm just going to navigate to the instrument that I just added and paste that. In. Okay. And then I need it to kind of like. And again, I'm just changing the volume to make sure it fits. We're going to go back here. We're going to split the pattern once more. And then we have the base parts. Oh, whoops. I'm going to drag this up like so. I'm going to delete this. And then I'm just going to copy this over here. Okay. So we made hip hop, EDM, and orchestral music all in one pattern. All in one take. Uh, that's very interesting. I don't think I've ever done this before. And the best part is it all sounds like, well... Let's just put it this way. It is not my best work that I've ever made, but you know what? Uh, I think a little bit of forgiveness is going to be accepted since I'm using all stock presets and plugins <laughs> since that's what I'm working with. Uh, okay, guys, hopefully uh, we can go to the next chapter confident and you have at least something. So even if you don't have all of this, that's fine. In fact, even if you just made one of these sections, like let's say you just worked on the orchestral or you just did the, the EDM part or you just did the hip hop part. That's fine. I'm just kind of going over a broad range. And actually, I don't even expect you guys to be able to completely follow along everything I've done. If you have, if this is your first time using FO Studio and you have everything I have up to this point and did your own take on it, that is insane. Like that is, I'm so like proud that you did that. If you haven't gotten to that point, I do not blame you at all. I was going extremely fast. Uh, and the amount of times that you're probably gonna have to go back and forth to see how I did things over again, I know it's probably going to be tough. So if you can't make everything the way I, I did it or get it to sound this good, that's completely fine. Don't worry. Okay. It's going to be okay. So, um, I think what we, I think we're pretty much ready to go to the next part of the, uh, tutorial. So with that, why don't we go to the next chapter? Okay. This chapter is going to be fun. First, we are going to go to our channel rack and we are going to click all. And we are going to see all of these instruments that we added. And what we're going to do is you're going to hold shift, go to start from the very first instrument, shift, left click, and drag your mouse down. And it will automatically select all of these. Then you can scroll down a little bit, hold shift again, click these last few. Now click control L. And what it's going to do, okay, it, you're not going to know what this is going to do at first. I'm just going to explain what it did. So click X on your channel rack. Now it's going to pop open this menu right here. You're just going to click windowed on this. So now we have this, this is called our mixer. And what it did right now is it just placed every single one of our instruments on a mixer track and named it and colored it for us it is super convenient. So again, that is control L. Okay. So we're going to keep this mixer open and we're going to go to the beginning of the song again and click play and just see what it's doing. <laughs>
Okay, I'm gonna make one last change to this because I just thought of it. It isn't a go. Okay, so it's gonna be like this. No, 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 it needs to go. Okay. Something like that. Okay, I know I said that we were doing mixing. Let's go back to the mixer. Sorry, I just had to make that change because I realized that it would sound cool. Okay, so as you saw, the mixer, uh, what or the mixer, this is uh, what's called the mixer. So we have the channel rack right here. We have the piano roll right here. We have the channel rack. Oh, wait, my bad. Hold on. Let's try that again. Playlist is here. This is the playlist. This is the piano roll. This is the channel rack. And then this is the mixer. Okay. And what the mixer does is it essentially let's just close out the rest of this i just want to see my mixer so what the mixer does is it lets us control the volume and effects of individual instruments so that we can kind of uh, blend them together okay so the first thing to put uh to know is that this changes the volume oh my goodness okay let's go to the beginning of the song just to try mixing this part of the song so i'm gonna right click select and we're just gonna focus on this little area and we're gonna go here and So you can see this changes the volume here. So this is going to be uh, where we're going to be leveling a lot. I also use the volume uh, a lot here. So uh, let's right click and just reset all these because I like the way the volume was initially. And if I right click, it's going to solo here. And note, this is not the same as actually soloing here. So you do have to. So no, if I right click and solo an instrument that is muted in my mixer, it's going to play nothing because see so if i these are separate basically is what i'm trying to get at so uh why don't we focus on just adding some effects to some of these instruments so i think some reverb would sound really cool on this electric piano so why don't we go to this slot uh there's slot one through ten just click slot one and let's find R fruity reverb two and click this here so now we have this reverb plugin and this is going to make it sound like it's in a room essentially so it's just up the wetness Okay, and then if you middle mouse scroll, you can actually move these uh, effects around here. And so that might be helpful for you. So let's move the reverb here. And in the first slot, why don't we do Fruity Delay Bank and just click in that. And this is just to add another effect here. And you don't need to know what any of this does. You can just listen to how it sounds. And if you don't want to hear an effect at any time, you can just simply mute it up here. I think that sounds great. So now we're going to go to strings snow, slow. And um, to make some quick changes here, I'm going to go to slot one and I'm going to add fruity parametric EQ two. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to change the frequencies of this particular instrument. This is what you're going to be using probably all the time. Okay. This is what's referred to as mixing. So let's say I have two parts of my song that sound like they're conflicting with each other. So we have, we have some low end here, but if you remember, we also have my bass instrument here. Um, if we listen to the bass here, we have this going on here. Oh wait, hold on. I have to. So you see, we have two things that have low end. So they're going to be fighting for space in the mix. Essentially what that means is imagine you're like packing a, um, I forgot what the trucks are called that when you move like a house and you have to put, put all this a moving van. Yeah. A moving van. Okay. So when you have a moving van, you have to fit all the items in your house into the moving van. And there's a very inefficient way of doing that, which would be to put all the things and try to stuff them in the back. Rather, what you'd want to do is kind of figure out where everything could, you might put the heavier stuff 
in the back maybe, or you would want to space it out properly so that everything has its spot and everything has its place in the moving van. In the same way with your mix, every every single instrument wants to have a space in that mix and you don't want to have it overcrowded in certain areas. So if you have too many bass instruments, it's going to sound overcrowded and it's going to sound not even, it's not going to sound pleasant to the ear because you'll have too many things going on in the bass instruments. Um, a good rule of thumb to remember is that you can have more things happening the higher up you go. So what do I mean by that? If you have a like, well, let's just listen to our melody. So we have this chill guitar. That sounds higher pitched than this. That's a lot lower and than this. I'd say that's even maybe even lower than this. Or maybe this is lower. I'm not sure. Point being, I can have less bass instruments going at the same time than I can have going with a melody. I could have a lot of that's why I have three pian uh, like three different kinds of pianos and stringed instruments, but I can't have three different kinds of basses because all the basses would be fighting for space. So what we're going to do is we're going to unclick on everything here. We're going to select everything here. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to work on just mixing in the strings with the rest of the song. So I'm going to open up by double clicking the parametric EQ2 and make sure that you are selected on the correct instrument. So I have all strings slow and we're going to just move, uh, we're going to cut out some frequencies to make it fit better. So you see what this does. So I'm just left clicking and moving these around. So I'm going to take out the low end out of the strings. So I'm just, I'm trying to move it. I want to get it to sound good and fit well in the mix. So I'm not really, there's, uh, just do what sounds good. So like change these until you think it sounds nice and then turn it off and on to see if it sounded better. Okay, I think it sounds a little bit better. I think it sounds a little bit more tighter uh, and a little bit better in the mix. Now I'm going to add another EQ onto my electric piano right here. See what I can do with the piano. So maybe I want to take the bass out of one of these basses completely. And again, I'm just adding EQs on every one of these instruments and just trying to get it to sound like it fits together by just taming some of the frequencies that I think are overlapping on each other. Okay, cool. So uh, right here, basically what we're doing is again, we're just adding different instruments. And I think that maybe a reverb would sound interesting here. So why don't we add a reverb also on the guitar? Oops. You guys actually don't have that plugin. I forgot. <laughs> I like instinctively opened my own reverb plugin that I have, but you guys don't have this. So we're going to open up for reverb too. My bad. And then I just want to put hover over this one. Okay, cool. So got something going on here. I think that it sounds a lot better. Um, cool. So if you ever want to disable the effects entirely, you can just go down, down here and click on this little icon. And then we can enable them all again. Okay, cool. So th this just, we're just adding effects here and we're just uh, trying to make everything fit together. Uh, why don't we go to the, this is going to need a lot more mixing, I think, is this EDM part right here. Yeah, it doesn't not, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't work here. So why don't we fix it? So let's focus on the chord. Part. 
Okay, and a quick way to take out low end is we have it actually in EQ here. I can actually go in and just really quickly just make really quick adjustments here just by moving stuff around and I can make really fast adjustments here. So uh, why don't we do that for a few things here? And like that, I was just able to EQ these things really quickly in a really convenient way to try and make it sound better. And so now we can add in the bass by uh, unmuting these right here. Get it to fit together and let's listen to that. All right, I'm gonna add a reverb to the lead. I think it would sound cool. And then this also needs a reverb, this little Illumi Sun thing. I'm just gonna add one to there. Sounds good to me. Okay, cool. Uh, and then so finally, we're just gonna mix the hip hop part. So let's select. Like Okay, you already know the flute needs some reverb. We're just gonna add reverb to everything. Uh, okay, reverb actually does drown out a lot of stuff. So if you want something more present in the center of your mix, uh, basically what it would it, uh, to explain to somebody who's never uh, understood it before, it'd be like something can sound far away from you and something can sound really close to you. And the items that you want close to you are usually going to be your lower end uh, instruments. So your bass, your drums. Um, also, I, I find that vocals uh, fit really nicely when they're in the center. Um, if, if you have vocals that sound like they're far away, uh, it can sound, I don't know how to put it. It just doesn't sound right. Uh, if you listen to a lot of music, you'll have, there's, there's some artists that can get away with doing some really crazy stuff. I know, uh, uh, Billie Eilish has a song where, uh, her brother produces it and he actually throws the vocals really wide and far away, which is very unique. Uh, you don't hear very many artists do that. So that was really interesting, but that's like, uh, an example, which goes against the norms. So sometimes you can get away with doing stuff with that, but generally you want your vocal, your drums, your bass all in the center. And then you can work from there to uh, try to uh, make some things far away. So it depends what do you want far away in your song? What do you want close? And so I'm gonna add a little, little reverb on this flute because I think it would sound interesting. And again, I just click the flute here and it's going to show me the effects for the specific flute and then I can add the effects here. So I know I didn't really explain that super well. So like when you click on this and it highlights in green, that's going to be the one that's selected and I can add an EQ here. I can also EQ it here. Uh, neither of them matter. And if you need to reset these, you just right click on the, on these little knobs and click reset and right click and click reset and it'll reset them for you. Okay. So I'm just in it. Uh, oh yeah. This is something I didn't explain either. My bad. If you scroll the, uh, the way I'm navigating this mixer is by scroll, scroll wheeling on the mixer. So th you just scroll wheel in the middle here and it will scroll between these. And then you have different uh, settings here. I use wide, but you can use wide three. You can use wide alt. All of these different things are going to show you different ways that you can organize your mixer. So right here. Ooh, I mean, you're only going to be able to mix so much in the beginning stages as a, as a producer, and you'll find more uses for mixing as uh, you develop your uh, your skills and you're producing more stuff you'll find that you need to do more so i think from here what we're going to do is move on to automation and this part i'm really excited for so let's move on to the next chapter okay this is an excellent point in the tutorial to show you what just happened so my file completely just crashed and i need to pull up a backup and i lost all the uh recording for one of the tutorials so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys what happens when what to do when your project just crashes. Now you're going to go to backup and you can see here, um, I can just right click on this top one and click open and it's going to open back up all the changes that we made. So I'm just going to click no and I have the backups enabled. So I forgot to uh, actually go over this with you guys. And since I ran into a crash, I think it is uh, helpful to just show you guys what to do to mitigate crashes happening. And uh, if they do happen, what you can do to fix it. So we're gonna go to options here and I'm just gonna help you guys uh, get this set up. So it's gonna pop up all this stuff, just hit F12, close it all out. We're gonna hit playlist and we're back to where we were. Uh, and I'm gonna go over everything that I kind of went over 
before and I'm just gonna show you guys how I did that and we're gonna go over it again with this file. So uh, we're gonna go up to options. Uh, we're gonna go to general settings, I believe. Uh, let's see, maybe it's project. Maybe it's not project, file. Okay, yeah, uh, backup. So you see how it says autosave frequently every five minutes before risky operations. That's what I do and maximum 100. So that's that's what I what I do. And what that does is it just saves like literally every five minutes automatically so that it doesn't like I never have something. I never miss anything. So right here, I was uh, basically what I was showing you guys is how to create automations and what automations do uh, in the project is they're going to uh, change the, the mix volume of an effect. So as I said before, right here, you have the mix amount. So this is going to control how much of a certain effect you want in the project. So if I have this at half, it's going to be 50% of this effect, zero, that's 0% of the effect. So with the reverb that I was showing you guys before, this is 100%, it's on, 0% it's off, and then incrementally increasing it. So let's say I want it to increase over time. How would I do that? How would I want in my song, I want the reverb to gradually go in because right now I've only shown you guys how to have it on or either off. So to gradually have it in, this is where you need a automation. So to do this, you would right click. Uh, I, I like to have my mix all the way down when I create automa automations and I'll show you why in a second. And then you just right click this and click create automation clip. And what that's gonna do is when you click that, it's going to create a blank automation clip on whatever, uh, whatever effect you had. So you see, I created two automation clips right here, which are called reverb and delay. And when I created these, I had them at zero and then I right clicked it and clicked create automation clip. Once you do that, uh, you can just right click and it places a little point here and you can right click the points and delete them if you need. And yours will probably look something like this. It'll look like all the way flat. Uh, what I did was I just created a point and then I moved it so that it gradually turns on from bar one to bar five it's going to gradually go up and that was my plan and then over here i just the thing i did was i created another point here and i just dragged that to the top right corner and then i did that for both of these uh and then so i have the delay and the reverb gradually going up the next thing that i talked about before it crashed and this is what caused it to crash is i said you know, it'd be so cool is if you could have the instrument change the actual instrument sound change as you, uh, as you, as the song goes on. And so that's exactly what I did. I had the chords here and I had these two, um, and, uh, these two automations. And what these automations do is essentially they change the length of the, the way. It plays. So if we listen to this, let me make sure I have all these enabled. I'm not sure where it's muted, but hold on. Let's see. Why is it muted? What? What is going on? Okay, one second. I'm going to try to figure out why this isn't playing. Oh, that's why it's not playing. I don't have my volume turned on. <laughs> there we go. I had my entire computer muted. All right. And now we should be able to hear it. So you can see when I turn on this automation, it gets way longer, the actual notes. And so how I did that was, is I double clicked a Lumi Sun. And then you can actually create the automations by right clicking sustain is what makes, uh, this is the, this is what I created the automation with. I, I had it at zero before and I right clicked it and I clicked create automation clip. And you can do this on any knob in the entire, the entire program. You can right click it and create automation. You could create an automation. Okay, never mind. You can't create an automation for that, but you can create an automation with almost every single thing in this program. So just try right clicking things and seeing what you can make automations with. It's really fun. So I created two automation clips with this. And you might be wondering, okay, how did you get the automation clips and not be the entire length of the song, like this bottom one? The way you do that is by right clicking the, the duration uh, that you want to repeat. And then when you create an automation, it'll create it within these, this like red bar. Remember, you right click and hover over that. And that's how I did that. Um, I feel a little bit bad that I didn't have the initial file. I had to kind of go over it like this since it crashed, but we're just going to kind of work with it. So, um, I'm going to make one more automation from the ground up just so that you guys aren't completely out of the blue since I made these before and it, you didn't really see how I made them. So I'll make one from scratch here. So why don't we go to a, uh, what I, uh, okay. What, what could I do here? Um, we'll have the strings not be in the first four bars. We'll have them gradually come in with volume. So... 
That sounds super weird. Oh, I, yeah, I turned on this effect here. I'm gonna delete that. Okay. Okay, let's right click this uh, knob right here and click create automation clip. And right here, remember I selected this, so it's gonna give me strings volume. So I'm gonna drag this down. And we don't hear the strings, obviously, because that's the volume of the strings. And if I make this just windowed and we can just watch what this, what this does as it. Perfect, and then you can see what happens. And for the rest of the song, it's gonna be at the max volume. Cool, cool. Okay, and so as I said before, you can right click and place extra things to manipulate uh, what's going on here. I'm gonna just delete this point and this point and this point. I accidentally put a bunch of points. Uh, and if this little middle note, if you left click it and drag up and down, you can actually change the way it like, it, if it goes gradual or not gradual, it's really cool. And then if you right click on the end note here, it gives you, or either of these notes, it gives you tons of options for different uh, ways you can have it progress. So this is really fun to just mess around with. I encourage you guys to just experiment, but like you have like stairs here, so I could click these and it like, there's so many, like you have no idea. Like there are so many different things that you can do. Half sign, like, I don't know what that does, but yeah, uh, single curve is the default one. So this is the one I, I almost always use uh, unless I'm trying to do something fancy, but yeah, so that's how you make automations. So I'm just gonna control this and just put it lower. I like most of my automation clips down here away out of the way of my other stuff. So let's just kind of keep these on their own little thing going on down here. Um, and yeah, so that's that's essentially how automations work. It's just going to uh, gradually change any effect or knob in the entire program, whether that's in an instrument, an effect, a volume, over time. And you can even do that to panning. You can do that for these panning knobs right here. Um, so make sure you click on all. And that, as you can see there, that's where the automations are. So we have automation and we have our automation stored in our channel rack as well. Uh, you don't really need to worry about that too much. Uh, you're not gonna use the chain rack automations for a whole lot of things. So if we click all, you can I, I can even right click these and I can create automations. I think you guys get the point. You can pretty much create automations for every single knob in the thing and the only thing that's uh, stopping you is your creativity to use automations. And so, uh, yeah, we didn't really need to go too in depth on this. I just wanted to show you that this is a possibility of something that you could work with if you'd like uh, and the rest is up to you what you wanna do with it. So I created a few simple ones here. You don't have to add these if you don't want to, but uh, we're going to move on to the final part, the final chapter of the beginner course. And yeah, so let's move on. All right, we made it to the end. Finally, we are going to master the track. So what is mastering? Mastering is essentially making the entire song sound cohesive and together for the final product that you're going to deliver. So the way that we do this is we are going to go to our master. It's has M right here and it's master. And what this does is every single one of these, uh, uh, you can see that there's little arrows. Oh, I forgot to mention this. Okay, so in the mixer, you have each one of these instruments, right? Now these instruments, you have this little arrow. And so if I take this arrow off, it's not gonna play, but if I click it into this, you can see there's a little wire going into it. It's going into the master. So every single one of these instruments, it's wire is going to the master. Now, uh, this is called routing. So this is going to be an advanced topic that we're not going to go over in this course, but in, a, in the advanced course, we're going to go into how routing can allow you to make buses and uh, control multiple instruments, volume and effects all at the same time. That's a really advanced topic. And I'm not going to show you guys how to do that now, but that, that you basically, if you can understand that each one of these has like a wire and that you can use this wire and that uh, to direct it, that that's a possibility. That's all you need to know right now. And what you need to know is that by default, all of the wires are connected to the master and the master is where all the volume goes into. So if I turn this off, I hear nothing. Okay. But you can see all of these are going into here. Okay. So what are we going to put on the master? The first thing we're going to put on the master is we're going to go to slot 10 and we're just going to put a fruity, uh, we're going to put Maximus. Okay. And what Maximus is going to do is it's just going to keep it from going over zero. Uh, so when it, things go above zero, it's called clipping. And clipping uh, does not sound very good. It can sound distorted. It can sound uh, poor quality. It, it just doesn't sound good. So you don't have your songs going above zero when you're starting off. Uh, it's really gonna hurt people's ears. So make sure um, you put Maximus at the end just to make sure as a beginner that your songs are not blaring out people's faces. Um, and then...
there's a few things that we can do to kind of make it sound a little bit more interesting. So I think that what we could do is we could add a fruity multiband compressor. Uh, and I know that that's like, you're like, I don't know what this is. Um, that's okay. We can go into this into a, the more advanced course as well, but maybe you could just try one of these presets here. So you could just do a mastering 2.4 dB maybe, and just put that on there and see if it sounds better. So yeah, so I'm not gonna, uh, for, for mastering for a beginner project, basically I just don't want it peaking above zero. That is the mastering that you guys will be focusing on. And then if, you, if you'd if you like, you can add an EQ and then make sure to click uh, this LIN. What that essentially means, this is basically just mastering mode. It's called linear phase. You want that enabled when you are using EQ, okay? Uh, I'm, we're not gonna elaborate past that point, but <laughs> So essentially, if you want to make brief changes to your master, you're affecting everything at the same time. So make a very minute ch changes. If, if it's something that you can fix in the mix, like let's say you think that this these chords in the mix need less low end, do not change that in the master, change that in the mix. The master is just supposed to accentuate everything together. So I might boost the high end just very slightly here, right? very basic changes like this. You're not going to do very big, large things on the master, just very basic things to make it sound a little bit overall more cohesive. Um, so yeah, so you can add in, whoops, you can add in a, uh, maybe a little EQ, you can add in a little multiband compressor, uh, maybe a Maximus. Uh, and then the Maximus has all kinds of different uh, presets that you can use. And these are going to be okay for your, when you're beginning uh, music. Obviously, I'm not going to use these myself because I, I, have my own mastering process over the over, I have my own plugins and all kinds of things that I use for mastering. But this will be good if you're making just a very basic song, uh, it could probably make it sound uh, louder and more clear. Okay, that sounds pretty bad. So we're not going to use that. But uh, if you ever want to um, use a different preset, you can just click on default to go back to the initial one. Um, I experiment, like just try different stuff, add different things, see what it sounds like. Um, and just find something, but at very least have a limiter at the end. So Maximus or Fruity limiter, put that at the end just so that it's not peaking at the end. And then that's really all you're gonna do be doing for mastering uh, for the beginner course. I know it's that's very basic for right now, but if, if you're a complete beginner, this is your first time using FL Studio and you can make a, and you were able to make this entire thing, it's not clipping above zero, it's all the notes are in key, you have a melody that sounds okay, like you are doing absolutely fantastic. And so here's my advice to you. So I'm going to bas basically just give you some producer wisdom before you guys, uh, I send you guys off to, to the, either the next course, if you want to do the, the second part in the series, I'm not sure when that's going to be coming out. Um, or if you guys want to just go on your own at this point, you have everything that you need to. Uh, here's what I would say, if you want to improve extremely quickly, what you want to do, first of all, do not watch tons of content. Maybe you just watch a couple videos. If you don't know where things are, that's it. And then what I'd say is make as much music as possible. Make a song, and then if it if it's not good, make another song. Don't keep working on that other song. If that's not good, move on. Make a new one. Make a new one. Ever when I started producing, I made a new song every single day for like two months, and that made me increase in skill faster than anything else that you can do. Uh, you will make way better music if you fail over and over again and learn from your mistakes gradually than if you try to work on one project and make it the best that you can. I can promise you that. Uh, the second thing that uh, I can push you guys forward after learning everything that I've taught you here is uh, start collaborating. Start uh, start collaborating with other artists. Uh, at, find people at your skill level. So like go into different discords um, and just find people in discord and say, hey, you want to make some music? You want to collaborate? How long have you been producing? Oh, you're new. I'm new. Why don't we make music together and have some fun? And you can try doing that. That's really that's a really great way to to, to grow your skills. Is to produce with somebody maybe slightly above your skill level, or um, at your skill level at least. Um, and that would be super super good for you guys. And then another thing that you can do is just talk with producers. Actually, just uh, you don't even have to collaborate. Just talking with other producers and letting and listening to their music, um, trying to give them feedback on their music, watching them produce. Uh, it, it Discord has a great feature. I. Discord is honestly the way I learned how music produce because I uh, met many, many fantastic producers that would literally just stream and show how they would produce and I just watch them and learn from them and then they would uh, work with me and we'd all learn together. And 
Uh, so yeah, that's a great way. It's just watching each other produce. Uh, find different uh, platforms and forums and discords where you can post your song, get feedback on it, and give feedback to other people's songs. Uh, that Having that critical ear where you can give feedback to somebody and they can give feedback to you is going to make you exponentially increase in, in, uh, in your knowledge because what will happen is, is that people will say, hey, you really need to work on this. And then you're like, okay, cool. And then you look up how to learn that specific area of music production and then you'll learn that over time. And that way you can focus on different parts. So... Um, I'm trying to think if, if there's anything else I can give you guys before you go. Cause I remember there was a lot of things as a beginner that annoyed me and I'm trying to remember what they were. That way you guys don't have to go through the same problems that I went through. Um, when you're working on projects, uh, it can be really difficult to remember all the things you're like, okay, I have to make chords. I have to make, uh, I have to mix, I have to master. I have to do all this stuff, automations, all everything. You're remembering it all at the same time and holding all that like in your head, like makes it want to explode when you're starting off. And trust me. Most of the stuff, it comes from habit. Uh, I don't remember all of this in my head. I, I, there's no way I'd be able to do that. The reason I'm able to do this without overthinking everything is because I, uh, because of practice. It's because of habit. It's because of uh, just um, the kind of like hands-on knowledge you get from working. Uh, and so that's also why I was telling you guys that you should produce as much as possible, as fast as possible, because that will give you the most experience and you won't have to overthink everything. Uh, you'll just be able to kind of have the more like intuitive, instinctive, uh, producing feel for it. And you'll get kind of like that flow state where you can just kind of produce and you don't have to overthink everything. So that's, that's one thing I see a lot of, over, uh, younger producers doing is that they overthink literally everything instead of just making music. And that, that can be really detrimental. Okay. So a few things, a few extra things I just remembered. Um, try to remake songs that you really like, uh, listen to a song that you like and remake it and see how close you can get it. So I did that recently with, uh, I forget which song it was, it was one of Dua, Dua Lipa songs. I tried to remake it like perfectly and I was able to get it to sound almost exactly the same. And that was like really helpful for me. It's just trying to think about how, to, how they produce. And so yeah, do that. If you can find people breaking down songs, how they made a, a, a like a top chart song, watch those breakdowns, uh, watch professional, uh, professional artists, uh, master classes. Uh, there's a really good one by Hans Zimmer. Highly recommend that. Um, just, yeah, listen, and uh, the content that you want to consume is the kind of con uh, content you want to be making, but you want to have a good ratio. So you don't want to be consuming all this content. Like you don't want to go on YouTube and just look up like a thousand tutorials in a row and then get an FL studio and think that you're going to be insanely good. That's just not going to happen. Okay. And you don't want to go the reverse. Also, uh, I would say that if you just only produce all the time and you never consume content, I've actually seen some producers have that problem as well. And what can happen is, is that they never kind of increase their skills. They never get to that next level. And so there's this little healthy balance where if you can consume uh, a decent amount of content, not too much, if you can produce and put out as much as you can with what you're learning uh, in an incremental stage, and you can spend time with people uh, that are better than you and with people that are at your skill level, uh, just bouncing off and having a feedback uh, system there. If you can have those three uh, parts of music production, you will grow as an artist and you will do fantastic. And I think that you guys are going to do great. And I hope that this course was able to give you the foundations that you need to start music producing. And if you have any questions, uh, you can just email me or you can uh, shoot me a message at, in, in Discord. Um, I want to hear you guys' tracks. So for free, I will give you feedback on any of your guys' tracks uh, that you made from this course. So you can just tag um, the producer course or whatever, or Tristan's course, and just uh, send me an email and then just send me your song and I'll feedback it for free. Um, I also will do uh, paid lessons. So if you want to know about those, you can email me um, and I can do a, a one hour or multiple hour sessions with you and I can help you out personally on a call and I can see your project and try to help you out with that. So if that's something you're interested in, you can shoot me an email. I'm always available and I'm super excited to hear what you guys are making with this course. See ya. Um, I just realized actually, uh, don't go yet. I forgot to, <laughs> to tell you guys one of the most important things before you're done. Uh, when you want to be finished with your song, you got a file export MP3 and what that's going to do, you can just title your song, whatever you want, and then you're going to click save and then export it through. And then that's how you export your song. And then I forgot to also say that with the free version of FL studio, the one drawback is that once you export a song, you cannot open it back up. Okay. So once you export this song, if you close this FL Studio file and open it back up, it won't let you open it without the paid version of FL Studio. And you might be thinking, oh man, that's such a bummer. Like, man, I want to open up and work on the same song. But I actually think that it's fantastic for people who are starting out because what happens is, is that if a beginner just stays on the same song, it's actually worse for them. So in a weird way, the free version of FL Studio is actually a benefit to you because it forces you to always be moving on to the next track. And that's the reason why 
I made so many tracks is because I couldn't go back to the last track. Once I was done with it, once I exported it, that was it. So uh, yeah, I can't believe I forgot that. So yeah, once you have the song, then you have to export it. And then, then you can export the MP3 file and save that and share it with your friends and share it with people. So I guess I'll just play the song that we finished here one time through and then I will see you guys later, I guess. Obviously, as I said before, this is pretty funny to me because it just sounds, I don't know, <laughs> it's not something I would normally make. So, uh, yeah, for the beginner course, I think it's, it, it'll work fine. Um, it's, 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 this is a learning tool. It's not something I would uh, release, but, uh, hopefully that this guy, this helped you. And, um, yeah, I'm really excited uh, to move on to the more, uh, interesting and difficult, uh, topics of music production. So I hope to do that soon and I'll see you guys later.